here's the thing. Uh, to become a true photo manipulation artist, you have to go beyond being a technician. Yeah, definitely. So, Clinton, tell me a bit about the sketch that you've got going on here. Um, how is this something that you normally do? Um, I actually don't do this all the time, but for this image, or actually for images moving forward, I've decided that I'm going to try and do a rough sketch just to just to guide me along when I'm adding, adding composited elements in. I knew this was going to be quite a large photo bash of different elements. So what I wanted to do was kind of draw in a rough guide and then I would build in around it. So as you can see now, I'm just trying to get the road together yep. and using different parts of the road. Uh, and that, as well, this is a little bit of a different style for me. I don't tend to do as much photo bashing or Frankensteining of elements to to create an image, but it's something I've been experimenting a little bit more with. Obviously, at the moment, I can't do a lot of photography due to the pandemic. Absolutely. So I'm kind of getting stuck into more into the, I guess, the stock side of photo manipulation. Yeah. Have you been inspired by young Redwan, perchance? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think he's, uh, Red One's a, a, a little genius, isn't he, in his uh, landscape and stuff. Uh, and annoying. I, yeah, um, but the thing is with me, I don't like to copy other people, so no, I, I no, tend no. to stay away from stuff if some, if someone's doing it, like, hence all this uh, cartoony uh, Benny stuff, what's going on in the minute, I'm trying to stay away from that because I don't want to yeah, do Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough, doing. but um, this has a distinct Clinton flavour because it reminds me of your hometown York. Yeah, yeah. The architecture and, I, and the stone. <laughs> I'm also like, uh, yeah, I've got so many different interests. Like I'm, I'm into history quite a lot. Yeah, I'm also you into like the nature and the outdoors and uh, I'm into horror movies, I'm into comic books. So all of my influences come from everywhere and they just come into these random <laughs> random images. Yeah. Um, so this is one of them as well. But as we're getting towards Halloween, I thought it'd be nice to maybe do something a little bit more on the creepy side. Okay, um, when you did that initial sketch, did you do that based on a compositional grid or did you just eyeball it from the beginning? I just eyeballed it. I think uh, the rule of thirds is quite basic. So, yep. I mean, anyone can kind of guess without using the grid now that like where the, the lines of the rules of third would be. Yeah, as um, long as the main kind of focal points aren't dead centre, you, you're yeah, kind of yeah. already winning, aren't you? I, I tend to I sometimes try and use the golden ratio because you can put it on in Photoshop on your crop. Um, I have seen Abby Esparza do that, mm. but I don't quite understand it. So you guys yeah, might need to do also, a lesson it, for me and teach it's me. It's one of those ones where it's, uh, it's not, it's kind of supposed to be a science, but I'm a little bit, um, I don't know if, it's, if it works all the time or not. It's, okay. Just luckily get certain elements to follow that curve round, but um, yeah, a bit skeptical. Yeah, let's talk a bit about the piece. So these stock elements, where do you grab them from, mate? So these are all pretty much or mostly from adobe stock i'm trying to think okay um almost. will i be able to get the stock listing from you so i can put that in the description for all the guys yep. watching at home yeah um and what composting technique are you using for dicing out these different elements so where i can get away with it i'm trying i'm just kind of trying to use uh, the color select so basically you select a color and then it masks it out from that color so there but are images that have the pure so these images yeah here so these here the, i'll just select the white and then it takes the white out of the image and if because too, they're background elements you don't have to be as hyper clean as if, if it was a figure or something no no and plus also like you want to try the easiest way first you don't want to be spending yeah. five hours pen tooling one well thing if, and if you look at those buildings times. they're 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 in the background they're probably yeah. going to be obscured by atmospheric haze i believe this is will result in a nighttime scene as well won't it yeah, definitely. And what 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 you're doing at the minute is I'm just bringing everything together. I'm not looking at the tones or the colours. I'm just bringing it all together. But once you're I've throwing I've got it scene, all down. Yeah. Once I've got the scene together, then I'll start playing with the tonal range, and then I'll start playing with the colours, and then I'll play with the saturation. Did the um uh, so the the theme of this piece, the headless horseman? Mm. Uh, was there anything in particular that you've seen recently or what, what yes. brought this idea up? So basically what this image is uh, born out of is I watched The Green Knight a, a little bit oh, earlier. Oh, that's and a bit of you, that film, mate. It is. It's, it's a beautiful movie. And there's a scene where the, 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 the tree knight or whatever that guy is uh, yep. picks up his head off the floor and then and then goes off on his horse out of the castle and down back into the forest. And there's it's just a one powerful scene where, visual image, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind. It kind of came from that. Plus, 
I've uh, watched Sleepy Hollow recently as well, which is a okay, beautiful okay. movie. That well. would explain it. But you're a fan of that movie production company because they were the same guys that did the Lighthouse, I believe. Yeah, and the Lighthouse again is. And you're a beautiful. big fan. Yeah. I want to see a Lighthouse homage from you. Now, yeah, no. I've, I've, I've been thinking about doing a series in black and white using strong light sources. I'm just trying to work out. It, for me, locations are always the hardest part. And if I was doing something like that, I want to shoot on location and then add things in as well afterwards. You know, you know what the problem with that would be, though, Clinton. It'll be a truly beautiful kind of sumptuous piece of art, and it'll absolutely flop because <laughs> yeah. it's black and white. <laughs> and it, well, no, I, I don't, the the cyborg black and white one did okay, didn't it? So oh maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. maybe there is one, but I know what you mean. Yeah, if it's not got blue and pink in it and neon no. lights, and it's which not is a shame, blue. really, because uh, my favourite artwork in the world is is just, like the the visual palette of the lighthouse is me all over yeah it's beautiful. so like that's the kind of stuff i would have hanging up on yeah. my walls in that, my house yeah that was one of the move like the, just like the green knight the lighthouse it was one of the rare movies what kind of sticks with you weeks after you've watched it, it. does it's a real it. powerful film man mm. um right i'm looking at your layer stack to the right you've yeah, so got what, your go-to curves adjustments yep so what I'm doing now is I'm just playing with it with the lights and the darks of all the different elements. So pretty much now every single element I've brought in, I will add a curves adjustment to that, and I'll pull down the the lights to make it darker, and then I'll also do a little bit of playing around with the color curves. Absolutely, um, uh, young Redouan would refer to this as values, and your own process for checking uh, values is the full check process. Do you yeah. do that with this particular piece? I I don't think I did until maybe later on down the line. That's think, normally a prior to a post processing for you, isn't it? Yeah. See, I'm I'm the number one Clinton Lofthouse expert in the world. I <laughs> I know more about your workflow than anyone else in the world, mate. That's probably because you watched all these videos. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I and I don't just skim watch them. Mm. I have to analyze them and really think yeah. about them. So yeah, I, I'm I'm absorbing your knowledge, mate. Yeah, because to, to be fair, it probably feels like a, bo a boring workflow, like just using curves literally on everything. But it's 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 probably the best way to do it. But it's because it's not it's not like the it's got the it's not got the the glory of all these little like well, special. Well, can I can I tell you something, mate? It's a lot more interesting than watching me cut something out with a pencil for ten hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it definitely is. Well, but yeah, it's, it's a way more exciting. It's a, it's a foundational tool. What what you need to, I would say, it's one of the most important ones you need to learn. But a lot of people kind of bypass it and add loads of random layers to match color and tone. right. Now, getting back to the artwork itself, you're doing some weird stuff with the curves adjustment. What are those little anchor points that you was tweaking? Tell me, because you know I don't use curves. I do not like curves. Yeah. So, so in, please in the explain. Curves, in the curves, it's like a histogram. So what you can do is create points on certain parts of the histogram. And yep. then pull it up and down to um affect that area. So if I put one in the middle, it's gonna affect the mid-tones. If I if I pull the curve up at the left side, it's gonna be the darks. And if I pull it mess around with it on the right hand side, it's gonna be the highlights. But you can also yeah. put other points in between all those tonal ranges. Right. I'm gonna to have to write this down so I don't forget, Clinton. Can we do a dedicated video where you teach me how to do just that one thing with curves? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yep. I've got to, I've got to write it down because my brain's a sieve. <laughs> uh, curves video, Clinton. Right, because what yep. you did there, I think would make and you know for the guys at home, I can't be selfish. It's not all about me, but I'm sure the guys at home would like to learn those advanced curves function because you are a bit of a master with that tool. Yeah, and I think it's pretty easy. It's like within ten minutes, you should have a pretty decent grasp of how to. So use you're it. saying it's so easy, even I could learn it, yeah. Definitely. Well, actually, I don't know about that. Might, Ooh, might, that's pushing it. <laughs> might need an audio book somewhere yeah. along the lines to get you up. And, up yeah, to some written that. diagrams and we'll be good to go, mate. <laughs> some high Okay, so very straightforward process for knocking that head out. Can you just explain a bit about that? Yeah, so I'm basically just uh, using the uh, pen tool or the uh, lasso tool just to get rid of certain parts of the body. And then yep. I just I did a selection where his head was missing. I filled it with white and then I just painted a little bit of shade in there. So it looks like um, it's empty. Uh, it would be the layers within that layer group. Um, were they smart objects? Um, if I'm adding a filter, it would have been a smart object, yeah. Okay, okay. If I'm I saw, I was, I saw well. you made that particular stock element like larger within yeah. the scene. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not judging, by the way. I never use smart objects, so that's not me saying, oh, you should be using smart objects. 
Mm. No, I only use smarter jokes in, when when I'm putting a filter onto something, it's like maybe a Gaussian blur or something along those lines, because it's non-destructive. You can go back in and then play around. If you don't do that and you make a mistake, you have to delete the layers. Absolutely. When you was doing those selections with a pencil, was you just doing 0% feather or did you apply? I, I noticed a little bit of feather action. Can you just explain if you put feather on there? Uh, I... It depends really. Sometimes I use no feather and sometimes yep. I use like 0.1 just to get a little 0. bit of softness. 0.1? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know Esparza does and I'm a mm. bit bad. I, I leave everything as, as sharp as humanly possible. It, it, I, for me, it depends on the image you're working with. If it's a softer image, then you'll want to use a little bit of feather. But if it's not, then you can probably get away with keeping it sharp. But I hear you. I, I, I would look at the quality of the image you're using first. I see a lot of people that um, you, Esparza, and some of the other guys using the blend if function mm. all the time. Um, and you use blend if there on an adjustment. And that's something yeah. I never, ever do. Oh, blend if's amazing for blending certain elements in realistically. Uh, it does take it, things to the next level, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Sometimes it's a bit of trial and error. Like, even I, when I use it, I play around with it to see what how it affects it because it affects every image in a different way but it's just it's good for getting realistic shadows it's good for uh, all sorts of stuff ah so here's the frankenstein action you were talking about yeah so and, i started uh, i started trying to do it on the other on that side and then I you know what i just thought then take my strong ridiculous. hand child take my strong <laughs> <Yeah>. hand <laughs> sorry <laughs> top of mashed potato yeah let's have a look oh this is my favorite stock artist ever on adobe stock the guy yeah, that does these amazing. prosthetic uh monster faces guys mm -hmm. if you want the these stock images or if you want to do some monster artwork i right, check out the link in the description below we include the image codes you you've got to check out this artist's work he's my favorite stock photographer in the world bar yeah. none yeah he's very good apart from us of course but yeah. you know yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, it's hard to find stock as good as, as well shot as that on Adobe stock. Um, he's probably the, one of the best ones, yeah. My absolute favourite. I've, I've created countless images, and I don't normally use the heads as, as a whole thing. I normally take an eyebrow, mm. I take an eyeball, I yeah. take an ear. And, Frank, uh, yeah, I, so that, yeah, that's proper Frankensteining. Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, when it, when it comes to monsters, I'm really good at Frankensteining. Yeah. Um, right, so we're really moving towards a nighttime scene here. I like the fact that the foreground buildings are dark and then you've got that lighter skyline. Do you keep that in yeah. place? Yeah, I do. Um, what what you can see as well, as I, was, as I thought, because I wanted it to have some rim light on the left-hand side. I was like, well, how do I bring some light into it? And I thought, oh, I'll bring some on those castle kind of runways or whatever you would call them roads or bridges they would have these um like pikes with fire on so i thought if i could yeah. add them by the door add some closer in it there's no reason then to use rim light on the side of the horse i think when you're creating composites like i've said this many times before as long as you uh, adhere to the rules of physics and and things like that you can then be a little bit more uh surreal with what you do but as long as you stick to certain rules like if yeah. you had rim light on that horse and there was no torch next to it and it was coming from nowhere. It wouldn't make any It'd sense. It'd look wacky, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah. Now, Clinton, how many of the techniques covered in this particular piece do you go over in your full-length course, Hollywood Processing? Because we haven't talked about that course that much, yeah. and it's and it's fantastic. So what techniques covered here do you actually go in-depth and do full-length walkthroughs for? Yeah, so we've got full-length walkthrough like, of, like an action poster. So I guess everything used in... I use the same workflow in all my images, so... Yep. Every everything that I do in this image will probably be in that tutorial. Um, okay. We also cover light effects. We cover light flares. We color um, color matching, color grading, all sorts of stuff. Okay. But again, like I, I know, like I said before, it sounds boring. But I'm, I'm I have one workflow which I use on on every image. I might well, there's nothing wrong with the, that because yeah. I've been watching Imadawan's videos and that guy mm. has uh, a set of go-to techniques and he uses them over and over again. And yeah. I don't think anyone here would argue that that man does not know what he's doing. Yeah, I think it's it's more about this 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 story and or what you're trying to uh, show. What's more important than the, how you get to that point? Well, here's the thing: uh, to become a true photo manipulation artist, you have to go beyond being a technician. Yeah, definitely. There's the, more to this game mm, than being a technician. Like this yeah, isn't yeah. a Photoshop channel. This is a mm. photo manipulation channel. 
the fine yeah. art application of the software. This is just a tool, but two thirds yeah. of the game is the idea and the story and the concept. Definitely, and I guess I'm. I would say I'm into more linear stories or more traditional story kind of telling. I'm not gonna. You won't. I, I don't do surrealist work, so you won't find me doing like floating trains with pumpkins and oh, glowing stuff. Oh, <laughs> shots fired! Shots fired! Right now, then for the last thing uh, about your course, because I, I don't normally ask about this, but I really want to know what what's the benefits of them taking the course as opposed to watching your time lapses. What What's, what do they get different that's different than this? Well, what they'll get is they'll just get the workflow in more detail. So instead of trying to see what's happening in this speed in it, and it's going to like times 20 speed or times 100 yeah. or whatever it is. More of a real it. time. I'll, yeah, I'll be, walking, I'll be talking them through uh, what I did. I also kind of dig into the PSDs of, of images and walk through all the different layers. PSD and explain. breakdowns. Yeah, um, and, and from what I understand, you're actually revamping yours in the same way that Red did his. Is that correct? I am, yeah. So we, we've got some exciting stuff coming up, and there's going to be some cool concepts as well. So, I'm so Hollywood to processing reloaded, new, yeah. improved. And Although revamped. we'll have to think of a new name. I, don't, I can't have the same name as Red. Oh, I'll never, no, I'll never no. hit, yeah, hear the end yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> but de but definitely click keep um, Hollywood yeah. Reloaded uh, not Hollywood see I've got it in my head now Hollywood <laughs> what say the name of your course Hollywood Hollywood processing, processing. that that Hollywood is an processing explosion yeah uh, ex well that that's explosive. that's an absolute banger explosive I'll, don't get rid of that branding because it's really really nice yeah, and it explains processing. what it is perfectly <laughs> um, right brushes you've got a cloud brush there where'd you get it from um. Which which one? The one on the floor, the mist. The one that you're the... using right now. Oh, the atmospherics. I believe that is an old Flern brush. Um, oh wow! I've had, is, I've is it free or did you pay for it? It was free. Yeah, they used. To... Oh, I mean, they used to give it away for free. I'm not sure because I haven't used oh, okay. Flern in years. But um, well, if it, you can find it, you'll link it to me so I can put it in the description. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For the guys, yeah, yeah? Definitely, yeah um, foreground fog. Where's that from? So that is from Kelvin Designs. Is that the right name? Okay, was that paid or free? Uh, that was paid for. So he's, okay. he has like a, a mist and fog brush. Well, the uh, good news is is that you never have to pay for mist and fog ever again because we've created the best mist and fog bundle on planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> is, has that been released yet? No, yeah, Epic Overlays is out. Yeah, man. Oh, I don't think yeah. I've got the, the fog Sell, one. Selling like gangbusters, mate. Yeah, um, I, don't have, I don't have the fog one then. I've got sparks. the light one. Sparks and Embers uh, Adobe Stock. Yeah, so this is all Adobe Stock. And again, I was the reason for to put the, a lot of these Embers in, I was like, it, the guy seems to be blending too much into the background. So how do I add colour and light behind him to separate him from the background? Yeah, he, he, it's quite a murky scene, so he's getting yeah, lost yeah. a bit there. Yeah, so are, I are, to... you, are you going to be... Um, so this is your go-to kind of gradient map action here. Yeah, so I was just playing around with colour. I don't think I added too much colour into it in the end up. Yeah, um, are you going to be doing your luminosity trick? Uh, not on this one, though. It, it, it was dark enough already. If I added yeah. more contrast to it, it would have made it even darker. Yeah. Fair enough. Guys, if you are getting value from this video, please do throw us a like and subscribe. It's free, easy, and really supports the channel. So, I like the embers. The, the orangey, reddy hues add an yeah. extra something to this one. It's quite a dark piece, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Again, for me, I quite like things to be. If I, it was if it was just really bright for no apparent reason when it's supposed to be night, it wouldn't make sense to me, and it would ruin yeah. a bit. And I sometimes think you have to work a little bit to to if you to enjoy art properly. So it's it's not going to be one way to kind of look at it from far away. You want to look go in close and look at the details, and then kind of spend a couple of minutes looking at it. I um, always say that about Abby Esparza's mm. artwork. The longer you look at it, the more you get sucked in. Oh, yeah, in. there's so much detail in Abby's work. It's She's one of the most yeah. underrated Photoshop artists on planet Earth, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you yeah, yeah. when you really look at her workflow and the way she... I know this is your video, but I just got bigger up for a moment. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm a fan of Abby's work. I, yeah, I, I just amazing. did a video with Abby and really seeing what she does and like that. Jeez mm. Louise, I, I, I feel yeah. like a Neanderthal in comparison, man. Yeah. No, she, she, yeah, she spends a lot of time on those details. Yeah, very detail oriented art artists. Yeah. And where we're living in a thumbnail generation, you know, mm. you, a lot of the artworks that pop at the moment are ones that are easy to digest in yeah. a thumbnail, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So it is. we've got your rim light in action here. You're going for the clipping mask approach. 
to clip those lights. Yeah, yeah, it's just a lot easier because you you don't go over the the kind of the where you've cut out the horse. You you, you only you can just stick to that and you don't go over. You don't bleed over. So I always use a. And of you're that. you're still on the um the the Wacom bamboo for this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am actually. Serves you the, well. The, trust, the trusty bamboo. I've had it. This is my first ever one I bought as well, and I've still got it ten years. Well, later. there you go. You you don't need the best equipment in mm. the world. You don't. I don't need even think tinting. they make these anymore. That's how old it is. But the um, I was talking to Abby about it the other day. Like just the entry level kind of smaller companies now. The tablets are so good. Mm. Right, I, we're I've not used wrapping up to the final stretch on this one, Clinton. Have you got any? final notes on this artwork or any closing tips that you have for the guys um i think just be be true to yourself when you're creating art is one thing as well i know cause obviously the subject matter in this is not trending at the moment but i i think if you start following trends too much you'll start creating work that you're not interested in or, and it, or it's not going to be of a high quality so i would just say like stick think of your own concepts yep be a storyteller and create good art amazing advice i love it well thanks for sharing today clintonymous cheers yep guys that will do it for this video i hope you enjoyed this one i'll catch you at the next one see you then